Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Cider. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going over some practical kitchen design tips to help maximize your small kitchen. So I'm not talking about color schemes or keeping things light to help make your space feel bigger, although yes, that does help. These are more practical things to help get more workspace and storage out of a small kitchen. Kicking things off with creating more countertop space. We all know that countertop space for food prep can come at a bit of a premium, especially for small kitchens. You need to fit your hob or cooktop, sink, and any small appliances that live on the countertop, as well as leaving enough space to chop and prep food and generally work in your kitchen. So I've got a couple things you could consider when designing your kitchen to help maximize that clear countertop space. Get a built-in microwave and put it up in a wall cabinet or get a combi microwave oven and put it in a tower cabinet. Basically this is removing a microwave that would otherwise sit on your countertop. Next, if budget allows, you could get a boiling water tap. Having a boiling water tap will eliminate the need for a kettle, which is another small appliance sitting on your countertop eating up space. So similar to the microwave, one before we're trying to get rid of as many small appliances that live on our countertop that are out all the time so it helps clear some space for work and prep. You could also consider getting an induction hob. I've done a whole video on induction hobs which I'll leave a link to but the big benefit in this scenario is that they're smooth and flat slim and in line with your countertop so it acts as additional work surface space. And lastly you could look at getting a workstation sink. You've probably seen them before the Swiss army knife of sinks with all the accessories accessories and bits and pieces they come with. Specifically for helping with small kitchens, getting a chopping board that slides across your sink again acts as some extra countertop in your kitchen and some prep space. Next we've got top boxes and tall wall cabinets. So top boxes are extra wall cabinets, usually a little bit shorter, that you place on top of your existing wall cabinets to help fill the space and get as much storage as possible. If you've got some extra ceiling height in your kitchen, top boxes are an excellent way to maximize that space and get some extra storage. They can be installed as part of a new kitchen or added onto your existing kitchen if you're looking for a way to add more storage. They might not be ideal for everyday items as they're a little bit more difficult to access, but they're great for that extra storage. Things you don't need every day, but you still need to store somewhere. You could also consider getting some extra tall wall cabinets. Either way, really, these options are just about maximizing that vertical space that you have in your small kitchen. Next, we've got plinth drawers. I'm sure you've seen plinth drawers before. As the name suggests, it's a drawer that lives underneath the bottom of your base cabinets in the area that your plinth covers. Plinth drawers add a bit of extra and secret storage. And again, it's just maximizing every bit of space that you have. There are lots of plinth drawer options out there on the market, and you can even build them in yourself. But I just wanted to highlight this particular one from Blum called the Blum Space Step, as it not only gives you the extra storage from the plinth drawer, but it also doubles up as a step, which is perfect to help with the last tip of having top boxes or storage higher up. The step helps to make all that extra storage that much more accessible. And it's also great for little helpers in the kitchen. They can stand on there and help join in in the cooking. Next up, we've got internal drawers. So this is drawers in drawers. So oftentimes in your kitchen, we'll have these deeper pan drawers as part of a drawer pack. However, these deeper drawers can often leave a bit of empty space in that little bit above your pots and pans, but below the next drawer above. So we can utilize this sort of dead space by installing an internal drawer in this section. The internal drawer sits in this dead zone and can be accessed once the main drawer is open, then you open the internal drawer inside. It's tucked away and hidden inside, perfect for slimmer items such as the lids for your pots and pans or baking trays, anything like that. And it really just maximizes that empty space, that sort of dead space in between the drawers. Moving on, we've got storage solutions or mechanisms. So kitchen storage solutions or mechanisms or pull out wire work, whatever you want to call it, can be a fantastic way to optimize your kitchen cabinets. They can transform a standard cabinet into a far more practical and accessible cupboard. Now there's a whole host of storage solutions for pretty much every cabinet, but I'll go through a few that I think are really helpful. So we've got corner storage solutions. These are things like your Le Mans corner system or your blind corner pull out system, sometimes called magic corner systems, anything like that really. These are perfect for those difficult to reach corners in your kitchen. With some of these mechanisms, it may feel like you're not getting the absolute maximum amount of storage out of your cabinets, but what you are getting is far more practical and usable storage. Next, I've got pull out larders or pull out shelves. I say it all the time, drawers are more useful than doors. <laughs> 
having something that pulls out towards you so you can see and access everything in that cupboard is far more useful than getting down on your knees and rummaging through a cupboard to see what's at the back of it. So including a pull-out larder or at least some pull-out shelves is a great way to optimize that storage space. And I find they can be especially helpful for narrow cabinets as it really maximizes that storage space that you have pulling everything out to you. Next, we've got the pull-down storage rack. Adding a pull-down storage rack can be a great addition for those cabinets that are a little bit too high and out of reach. Really handy for those shorter chefs among us. So maybe combining one of these with an extra tall wall cabinet that we talked about earlier, you've got that extra storage space and by adding a mechanism, it makes it more accessible and practical as well. And lastly, not quite a mechanism, but something good to consider are sink drawers. As I keep saying, I think drawers are more practical than doors. So consider getting a sink drawer cabinet, not only to help make it a bit more practical because it's a drawer, pull everything out to you, but also to include a usable top drawer. So rather than just wasted space at the top of a cupboard around the sink and the waste, you can get a drawer with U-shaped storage or storage on either side that's designed to fit around your sink. Okay, it's not loads of storage space, but it is extra space and it's handy to put your sponge and washing up liquid and bits like that. And lastly on my list, consider getting a slim dishwasher. An easy one here, but one that's actually quite often overlooked. It's ideal for smaller kitchens and households. Maybe you live on your own or there's just the two of you and you don't really generate that much washing up. A slim dishwasher could be a great option. If you need that extra little bit of storage space or space to fit a particular cabinet, then a slim dishwasher could help you out. It means you don't take up as much space with the appliance, but you're not foregoing having a dishwasher completely. You can put away the sponge and washing up liquid. You'll be surprised how much you can actually fit into one of these slim dishwashers, especially one with the cutlery tray at the top, so you don't need to have the cutlery basket in the main bit at the bottom. This frees up that main space at the bottom for bigger pots and pans. Having a slim dishwasher could be a good compromise if you're struggling to fit everything into your small kitchen. So there you go, some practical tips and ideas for getting the most out of a small kitchen. Do you have any tips when it comes to small kitchens? Let me know and leave a comment below. We can all share and learn from our top tips. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.